This was an 11 and a half game lead for those surprising Minnesota Twins. Cleveland's been one of the hottest teams, the hottest team in baseball over a period of time lately. But when it comes down to who wins this division, What's going to determine who wins it? Well, the first thing I see is the Twins' rotation and inconsistent play in that rotation. Perez has thrown a couple of clunkers. Gibson has been up and down. Even Barrios now starting to feel that pressure. They can't go down like that, especially in the middle of a race being so tight. They need to be able to succeed, go deep in ball games to take pressure off the bullpen. The second thing I see is Ramirez getting hot in that lineup. With the add-ons, this is a totally different lineup. They're playing with a lot of life. Terry Francona's done a heck of a job keeping those guys motivated and hungry and believing in that locker room that they can win this division. Yeah, Don Troy, you're absolutely right. You know, they're one of the things when you you have a veteran club like they've been there. Mm-hmm. They, you know, absolutely. they don't get too high. They, you know what? They they they're, they know they're going to get back in this thing and they have. But you you look down the road and you've got you've got Kluber coming back. You've got mm-hmm. Carrasco coming back. Uh, you had those two guys in the mix. They're going to be tough to absolutely. beat. Absolutely. Hey, talk about the uh, the Minnesota Twins. Could they be just coming back to earth? You talked about the uh, experience that Cleveland Indians have this year. They've been there before. Minnesota, one of the surprise teams. Could they just be coming back to earth in Cleveland, of course, doing what they've been doing? 42-19, and 19, I believe, over the last 51 games. I, I mean, you just let me know, Skip. I mean, that offense came out like a bat out of hell. I mean, this was a juggernaut offense. You couldn't believe that they could last for the whole year hitting the ball out of the ballpark at that rate. But... The pitching always comes to roost. And you tell you what, you cannot hide pitching even though you have a high-powered offense. You still need to get people out. And they're starting to struggle getting right, people right. out. So that's why they've come back down to earth. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a weaker division, so you're able to c- accumulate wins. But when you're going up against Terry Francona, a veteran manager that, that you talked about, keeps guys even kill. I knew it was going to be a race. I knew they weren't going to win by 15 games. Well, if you're going to live with the long ball, I mean, and they, did, they got off to a great start. They hit a lot of home runs early. You start to get to this time of the year where you're you know, you tired face, legs tired. Face, mm-hmm. Facing that quality pitching, it's start. It's hard to hit home runs, and if you're going to live with a long ball, man, it's it's tough to win games in the big leagues. And Nelson Cruz, one of those guys, has been doing a great job hitting the long ball for him. You saw him leave the game with that injury, so Minnesota can't afford those key injuries down the stretch. Meanwhile, you talked about Cleveland getting healthier with their pitching staff and early today. Corey Kluber made his first rehab start since breaking his right forearm on May 1st. Now, Kluber threw 41 pitches over three innings for Triple A Columbus, and the two time Cy Young Award winner allowed two earned runs, both of those solo shots. Let's so welcome in our FS1 MLB insider, John Paul Morosi. In addition to Corey Kluber, guys, uh, Carlos Carrasco has already begun bullpen work. What are the Indians expecting of Kluber and Carrasco? Well, Mike, good evening. I think with Corey Kluber, a good start today because he was able to get out to three innings. I would expect he'll come back to the active roster by around the end of August, early September. Perfect timing for the roster expansion. We have seen the Indians play so well, certainly that the rotation's been excellent. Bieber has emerged. Plesak has emerged the last month or so, and really getting Kluber back around that time allows him to probably space things out a bit more, take advantage of the expanded roster in the month of September. Carrasco, as you mentioned, of course, as we know, he's being treated for leukemia, but doing well. He actually threw a bullpen session earlier this week, yesterday, and actually scheduled to pitch again in a bullpen session on Saturday. Understandably, Mike, the Indians are being very guarded in their assessments of Carrasco and how soon he might be able to come back. Mm -hmm. But there is a belief, a will, certainly on the part of Carlos Carrasco to get back and pitch again for this team this season, which is simply remarkable and really augmenting, as as Terry and Dontrell had talked about, Mike, just how well this rotation has performed. As our Anthony Masterson points out, they've got the best team ERA since the beginning of May, or actually the beginning of June, rather, and the best record in baseball since the start of June as well. Yeah, 42 and 19. And of course, if those two pitchers can come back, make things very interesting down the stretch. The Astros, Yankees, still the two teams to beat in the American League, but Cleveland trying to do their job as well. 